lossless scaling is finally available on Linux. There has been a lot of work from a particular developer who uses Linux and decided to port it over by using a lot of the translation with the Windows lossless scaling application. So in this video, we are going to one, show it, to actually show you how to use it as well, either it be through the GUI that they provide, or it be through uh, if you want to apply it to a particular uh, Vulkan application and many other things. So the first thing is, what is lossless scaling? Well, lossless scaling is basically an application that's able to provide frame generation onto any type of game. Now, there is many other things that you can apply to it as well. And this comes down to where you can apply it to a game, you can apply it to an application, you can apply different uh, profiles as well. As we can see in this trailer here, you can apply all types of different uh, things into this application. And of course, in the name, loss of scaling, you're able to do scaling as well. So if you want something to look more sharper, uh, you can uh, indeed do that, as it shows here. Uh, it just says like no, no scaling, uh, 1080p on a 1440p display. And then we hit play here and it goes, uh, you know, <laughs> 3,686, 400 pixels at native 1440p. And it applies that lossless scaling to it. So you can really uh, do a lot of things in this application. It's very much a power user uh, application, I would say. Something that I personally will probably never use, but I know a lot of people like using this. So there was a developer that decided to port this over to Linux, and they have been working on it for a very uh, decent, not even, no, no, not even a decent amount of time. It's been like, a, what, like a couple of months maybe, and it's already uh, really freaking good. I mean, probably the developer may have been working on it for a lot longer, uh, but when it comes to when it actually, you know, arrived on GitHub and everyone was able to test it out, now there's like a GUI, uh, it's only been like, what, like a, like a month or two? Uh, so it's been pretty insane. And when it comes to the, uh, you know, how good is it, uh, it's really good with a, any type of game that I've tested so far. It works flawlessly or when it comes to opening up and doing like a video, for example, watching like a movie and having it applied, uh, those things do work properly. The first one is how do you install it? Well, if we do find uh, the release page here, which we just click on releases here, uh, we can see the 1.0 release. And there's a couple of different ones that we can grab. So if you want to use it on Debian, you can do that. If you want to use it on Fedora, there's a .rpm. If you want to use it on Arch, you can either grab the .tar and then do sudo pacman uh, space dash capital U, and then you just drag and drop the file into it, then it will install it. Or you grab it from the AUR, because it is available on the AUR now. And if you are someone that wants to use it on Flatpak, or let's say you use a mixture of system and Flatpak, and you want to use it on Flatpak applications, you can now grab the free desktop Vulkan layer LSFG uh, Flatpak application. And I would rather, uh, I would recommend that you grab the 24.08 version, not the 23 version, because most uh, applications are probably going to use the newer runtime uh, in general for the Vulkan layer LSFG. And then there is a no UI if you don't want the UI, uh, you want to use like, you know, either the environment variables or just through the terminal, uh, you can uh, grab that one. So when you do install it, uh, you will get a shortcut, if we just search up LSFG, a LSFG-VK configuration window. We do click open here it brings up a nice gui that we can use to configure uh the lsfg and apply to different uh, applications that are running and then we also have the frame generation area so we have the multiplier we have the flow scale the performance mode a hdr mode and then the present mode so let's try out a game so we can actually show how this exactly works so we're going to launch out uh, the finals. This is personally a favorite game of mine. Uh, nice FPS shooter. I'd highly recommend it. And I have tested uh, LSFG on this game and it's very interesting. Uh, one of the things with applying uh, the, the LSFG onto a game is the latency increase that happens. Uh, it's pretty noticeable, I would say, when like aiming around. But this is just to show uh, an example. 
All right, as you can see, we are now in the finals practicing range. And if we do uh, select the uh, .exe of this game, which is usually called either a game thread or it's actually called the .exe of the name. So something like uh, Batman Arkham Knight, it's called Batman AK.exe, but for the finals, it's called game thread. So if we do apply this here, and then if we uh, change the multiplier, so basically this says here is double, triple, or quadruple your FPS. Now, it says that, but when I do apply it on my, at least on my GPU, uh, it actually decreases the FPS. So I'm a bit confused as to what they mean by that exactly. So if we do turn up this multiplier here, like I was saying before uh, a bit, you can see the FPS actually drops. Uh, so I don't know what it means by double, triple or quadruple your FPS because that doesn't really make sense when the FPS is going down unless the FPS overlay is not showing something that the uh, lossless scaling is actually doing. Uh, but yeah, if we do apply this here, we can really see uh, what happens here uh, because it's using frame generation. So it's basically you know trying to create those fake frames in between and we can see just how uh, wonky this can get uh, the more or higher you put up that number. So 10 is not a good number. Something like uh, you know, 4, 3, 2, or 1. For an FPS game, 1 would be best. But even so, um, you can feel the uh, latency. Uh, but yeah, maybe like 2, 3, or 4 or something like that. You can still see it gets a bit wonky with an FPS game. Uh, and then you can enable the performance mode, which doesn't really change that much. And then the flow scaler, uh, which is uh, lower the internal motion estimation resolution, which personally, I don't understand what the hell that even means. Uh, so if someone knows uh, what that does necessarily, I did try to do some research, but it was something about like how the fake frames are, are like generated like in between. But yeah, if someone knows any uh, you know, better knowledge about that, please comment down below. And one of the last things in this GUI is a HDR mode now for me when testing this on the finals when we enable hdr mode i see no difference being applied and i do have hdr enabled within my monitor also so i don't really know what the hdr mode is doing exactly in the finals uh, i'm guessing maybe in other games it actually might work properly and then of course the other option is the present mode so if you want to force immediate or you want to force fifo uh which is slash vsync uh, a type of vsync which is actually i would say pretty good when it comes to the type of vsync it's providing and then mailbox so you can choose between those uh depending on the game or video you know whatever you're trying to do now there is a quirk slash wiki page for all the things that you can do to try and improve the uh you know uh scaling frame generation uh that is happening with this application or with this software together with the community i've found a bunch of quirks with various games if you're encountering issues try applying any of all or all of these suggestions below and see if they fix your issue try these first explicitly enable vsync in the game settings and don't override the present mode using lsfg vk cap the game to add a stable frame rate disable uh, vr Disable Manglehut, VK Bass, or any other installed Vulkan layer. And then for Wayland users, disable tearing in your Wayland compositor. Disable direct pass through in your Wayland compositor, an option described as bypassing the compositor in full screen. Uh, run the game in a window. And then OpenGL games, try using Zinc. Uh, if it crashes slash freezes using Zinc, you're out of luck. For Steam Deck users, watch the game using enable underscore game scope underscore WSI equals zero space percent command percent. Lower the game resolution and use non-linear scaling uh, in the debug menu. Wait for LSFG VK 1.1.0. For 32-bit games, try using Proton underscore use underscore wow 64 equals one when using Proton. Might not work using older proton doesn't work for native games if megahertz slash steam slash etc doesn't detect generated frames there's not much you can do about it except wait so like i said yeah, if, if there's issues with uh, a game you're trying to play and you're trying to apply it and it's not doing it properly mostly all you can do is just wait for this project to improve now, one thing that I have noticed is when I try to apply uh, LSFG to a Wine Wayland game, so I force, let's say, the finals under Wine Wayland, uh, the GUI 
uh, can't actually enable LSFG onto the game. Uh, sometimes it's able to do it. It's very much um, just like it's, it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't work. Uh, most of the time it doesn't work. So what you have to do is go back to the old way of enabling LSFG with environment variables, which is pretty easy to do, I would say. So as you can see here, there is a bunch of legacy environment variables that you can use uh, on a game. So for me, I've set up a pretty basic one for the finals. Uh, if you have a look here, it's just LSFG underscore legacy equals one, LSFG underscore multiplier equals eight. So I'm gonna do the multiplier by eight, and then I'm gonna enable uh, Wayland with the latest GE Proton Runner, and then space command, uh, percent command percent, so that it actually uh, does work. And if we do launch the game, uh, we'll see that it does indeed get applied. And as we can see here, the uh, yeah, the, the frame generation stuff that's happening is actually uh, being applied. Uh, you can just look at it. It's yeah, making all the, those weird wonky effects because it's all those fake frames trying to predict what is happening <laughs> and it's yeah and the other thing that i've noticed is when it comes to using the gui and trying to apply it to a flat pack application or even a regular application like let's say mpv like you're watching a movie or something and you want to apply frame generation or lsfg to that application uh well on the gui it doesn't seem to apply it properly so how do we actually apply it uh let's say with a flat pack application and of course before that you want to grab the flat pack runtime for lsfg just to make sure that it does get applied properly i would of course get the latest version which is 24.08 and then you can easily install it uh, through the uh, gui store that you have on your desktop environment that you're using on your linux distro so the uh, test that we are going to do uh, with running an application, uh, if it was flat pack, uh, basically what you do is you do the environment variables, the legacy ones, then you do flat pack run and then copy the name of the flat pack application. Like I got Delphin here, he's the actual name. We copy that and then we paste it in here. So that's for flat pack. But we are going to do uh, just regular NPV and we're just going to launch a video that I have on, on, my, um, on my storage. So we're going to hit enter here. And then if we have a look here, we just mute this. When we go to some gameplay here, we can already see it's already, um, you know, working. And as you can see, it is, yeah, it is working uh, perfectly fine. Of course, it does look really bad, I would say, because the multiplier uh, for LSFG is rather high. Uh, so yeah, it looks a bit wonky, but that's just to show that it actually is working. And you can really apply this to anything so i was doing this with like bottles for example just running bottles with lsfg applied and it was so weird going through the menus because it was just like super wonky uh when you have the multiplier really high so i guess i can show that real quickly so as you can see we do have bottles open and it is applied uh even just moving my mouse over it's really wonky and as you can see the lines here uh between each bottle is completely like broken it's like blurry and yeah, as you can see as we're clicking through menus it's like super uh yeah just it it's working so it <laughs> doesn't look that great but just to show an example that it is working under just like a regular flat pack um application and just to bring up one more thing, uh, the known incompatibilities with LSFG are Zinc. So OpenGL games are fundamentally not supported, but you can, however, use Zinc to translate OpenGL to Vulkan. This method is unsupported as Zinc itself is already pretty buggy. Zinc might work or it might not. Uh, so if you want to try and apply LSFG to an OpenGL game, you're going to have to force it under Zinc because that, that will translate it to Vulkan and then that's where LSFG will be able to apply because it's a Vulkan layer. And then native 32-bit games, Proton users can apply the workaround method uh, in the quirks page, but native 32-bit games are un unfortunately not supported. That's it for now. Back when LSFG VK was in early development, we used the table below to track which games worked and which games didn't. It doesn't matter much anymore, but it is archived here. So if you want to look at the old table, uh, here it is. Of course, this, is doesn't, this doesn't really matter because most games 
uh, work now. So when it comes to uh, what is left with LSFG, I do know with the main LSFG project on Windows, there has a lot more functionality within the GUI application. Like you're able to apply different profiles for different applications. But I think uh, as a you know as Linux users, we kind of already know what needs to be applied once we learn how to use it. But it would be nice, uh, like with the official application, it has different profiles that you can easily select for whatever application or video application uh, you're using. So let's say you're trying to watch, I don't know, some anime, for example, there could be a profile for that. Or if you're watching uh, something that's a bit more um, slower, you can apply a profile for that. Or if it's a video game of some sort, like an FPS game, you can apply that profile so that the user doesn't really need to learn uh, what this means, like the multiplier, the flow scale, the performance mode, um, all of that stuff. Of course, though, that's not really uh, an issue, I would say. It's just like the Linux users will just have to figure out how to use it properly. And if you already know how to use it properly, then you're perfectly fine. Now, I would say, and 100%, I would say, uh, please donate to Pancake because this person is uh, working their butt off, I would say, trying to get this to work uh, better and better. And there's many other contributors as well. There's only seven, actually, only seven contributors in this project, uh, which is quite small, I would say, for such a project that is doing something that is pretty important for a lot of uh Linux users, I would say, or Windows users that want to move over to Linux, as I've just, over the past like year, I would say, uh, LSFG has been something that Linux users have wanted, and now that it's finally here, I would 100% uh, donate to this project because they have been just like improving it every single day, I would say. So you can see here, there is a coffee link here, and there is uh, a GitHub sponsor, which you can do. So you go to coffee here, or if we do the sponsor one, um, you can pay a monthly either custom or just a five dollar a uh, month and as you can see there is 27 sponsors uh show so far and then of course with coffee you can send you know a, a coffee donation either it be one time or monthly uh to the developer so that's the conclusion with this video i would say uh you know it's a great project i hope that it, it continues to improve because there are so many people that love using lsfg uh, so if you guys did enjoy uh this video i definitely would give it a like i definitely would subscribe to the channel and thank you to my supporters i'll show a text across the screen thank you for your money every single damn month i really do appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace